In this video, we go through the untold life stories and rare photos of Celine Dion. Celine Dion's rise to fame was sponsored by a forbidden relationship. She gave everything for true freedom in the industry, but just at the brink of her new dawn, her husband died, her mother died, and she might never be able to perform again. Was it just an unfortunate stroke of bad luck after bad luck? Or was it something in her past that was coming back to haunt her? Let's find out! Celine believed that she would have most probably ended up as a housewife if music didn't work out. Why? She hated school. As revealed in her autobiography, Celine Dion was bullied so much in school because of the shape of her teeth and her slender appearance. Her classmates nicknamed her Vampire, and Celine just couldn't wait to go home each day. Running home every day does not mean that life was easier at home. It was just better. Celine's childhood might probably be the worst years of her life, and her parents being dirt poor was the least of it. As a child, Dion suffered a lot of injuries from accidents. When she was five, a car hit her into unconsciousness. She was rushed to the hospital, and luckily, it caused just a minor concussion, and within a few days, she was discharged. Growing up around music meant that Celine constantly fantasized about holding a microphone and singing to a crowd. Her parents were music lovers, and when Celine was a toddler, they formed a singing group that they called Dion's Family. Celine had her first stage appearance at the age of five at her brother's wedding. The audience couldn't believe her voice as she left them mesmerized after her performance. Her parents saved up money and opened their first piano bar, and they would invite Celine to perform alongside her siblings. That was how Celine's passion for the stage kept growing even stronger. Celine has always been too kind not to leave out that her mother was her biggest inspiration growing up. Celine's big show started after her 12th birthday when she wrote and recorded her first song, a French song that translates to nothing but a dream. Her brother would send it to music manager René Angelil after he found his name on the back of Jeanette Reno's album. According to popular stories, René was moved to tears as he listened to Celine's tiny but powerful voice and he decided that he was going to do all it took to make sure that the world heard Celine Dion's voice. But there was just one problem. Rene was almost as poor as Celine's family, and he just didn't have enough to promote her music. So he did something really crazy. He mortgaged his house and used the proceeds to fund Celine's first record, La Voix du Bon Dieu. True to his predictions, it was an instant hit, and it quickly rose to become number one in Quebec. Celine was all ready to take over the world, but something happened to her when she saw Michael Jackson for the first time. Rene revealed that Celine Dion was pretty okay with all she was doing until she saw Michael Jackson performing in 1986. Something in her desired to be more, and the first step she would take in that direction would land her in surgery. Celine Dion went in for dental surgery to fix her teeth, and afterward, she would try to learn English. With her English language skills at a satisfactory level, Celine released her first English album, which she called Unison. It caused a sensation in the international market with one of her songs, Where Does My Heart Beat Now, peaking at number four on the US Billboard Hot 100. This was a big success, but an even bigger hit was coming. 1991 was the year she had been praying for. Her duet with Peebo Bryson on the title track to Disney's animated film Beauty and the Beast would be her ticket to stardom. The song won an Academy Award for Best Song, and Celine won her first Grammy for Best Pop Performance by a Duo with Vocals. Her next big thing was in 1993 with the release of her third English language album, The Color of My Love. To date, it remains her most successful album, selling more than 6 million copies in the United States alone. Think Twice, a track from the album, became a major hit in the United Kingdom, ranking at number one in the UK chart and it stayed there for seven weeks. It eventually became the fourth single by a female artist to sell more than one million copies in the UK. While she made headlines in the English music industry, Celine kept true to her French roots and would continue to release francophone recordings. Some of her most successful French songs include Or que tu m'aimes encore, Je sais pas, Encore une soir, Parler à mon père, and the 1996 All By Myself. Her English music career flourished with hits like The Power of Love, My Heart Will Go On, I'm Alive, 
That's the way it is, and somebody loves somebody. With record sales of over 200 million worldwide, Celine is the best-selling Canadian recording artist and the best-selling French-language music artist in music history. She is the second woman to accumulate US $1 billion in concert revenue. The first was Madonna. Celine was also recently recognized by the IFB for selling over 50 million albums in Europe. Her career was on the path she envisioned. There was enough money for her and her family, and her fans adored her. But Celine was about to take a risk that would change everything. But you can't blame her. That's what teenagers do when they're in love. At the peak of her fame, during her time with manager Renee, Celine started noticing that her feelings for her manager had evolved, and at first she would try to hide them until they became too obvious. Her mother, who had always traveled with her, didn't even want to hear it. Celine was only 19, and the man she claimed she loved was 26 years her senior. I'm not a minor, Celine told her mother. This is a free country. No one has the right to prevent me from loving whoever I want to. But it was not just about her mother. Renee saw it too. And though he couldn't deny his feelings, he would still try to avoid Celine. I was in love with a man I couldn't love, who didn't want me to love him, who didn't want to love me, Celine wrote in her autobiography. Love eventually won, and Celine and Renee started a beautiful love story, but they agreed to keep it away from their fans and the media. According to Celine, even though she had won her mother over, they were scared that people, including their fans, would disapprove of their relationship, and that would cause a stain on her career. Things continued this way until 1991, when Celine and Renee couldn't hold it in any longer. They came public with their relationship, and the reaction they got made them wish they had done it sooner. Contrary to what they thought, their fans all over the world would overwhelm them with love and encouragement. And that was a big relief. A lot was at stake with that one bold move. Celine and Renee took things to the altar in 1994. Their extravagant wedding ceremony was broadcast live on Canadian television. But after the wedding was over, a new wave of unfortunate events began. Celine and Renee somehow managed to keep it together for years before their marriage, and after the wedding, they just couldn't wait to start a family. But there was one problem. Celine couldn't conceive. The eager couple tried many fertility tests, but nothing was working. Celine finally decided on in vitro fertilization, and within a couple of weeks, she was pregnant. She gave birth to her first child, Renee Charles, in 2001. But the couple still wanted more, and this time it was going to be even more difficult. Celine had to put her career on hold and cancel multiple contracts just so she could undergo IVF treatments. I was not going to stop just because I had a contract for singing. I would have hated every song for the rest of my life," Celine said on canceling her contracts. The second time proved to be more difficult than the first, as with each failed attempt, Celine revealed that she and her husband were deeply frustrated. This was not just about the thousands of dollars that went in. Having to try again, hope again, and wait again was all very exhausting. But there was a silver lining. For all her troubles, life compensated her with twin boys, Nelson and Eddie. Celine and Renee were finally living in the days they prayed for, but Renee wasn't going to be around much longer to enjoy the fruits of his labor. He was diagnosed with throat cancer. This was corrected at first in the early 2000s, but it returned with even more deadly symptoms in 2013. It had advanced now, and the doctors predicted that he had just a few months to live. January 14, 2016, two days to his 74th birthday, Renee lost the battle to cancer. That was how death crushed Celine's dream of happily ever after with the man who had started it all for her. She was devastated, but surprisingly, Celine picked herself up from the ashes and gave love another try. Might be a mistake, but she just didn't care enough for that. It was hard to say at first if it was just a rumor, but Celine would come public to state the exact nature of her relationship with the 34-year-old dancer, Pepe Munoz. Yeah, there's another man in my life, Celine confessed but he is not the man in my life. I don't mind the rumors because he's handsome and he is my best friend. Celine, although admitting that they share a very special connection that helped her with her grief, still denies anything romantic. She also revealed that Munoz is gay and so there was no way anything could happen. However, Celine didn't fail to establish that she is at that point in her life when she doesn't care about what the media thinks. 
she only wants to enjoy the rest of her life. Renee's death must have left a wide vacuum in the heart of the Canadian singer, but I wouldn't want to believe that she's given up on love just yet, especially after she came open with her secret struggles with loneliness after Renee's death. And if that ever happens, we wish her the best of it with the most un-Hollywood endings. Celine has struggled with her health all her life, and as she has advanced in age, new symptoms surfaced, but this time her immune has become too weak to fight. In 2022, the Canadian singer was diagnosed with a rare neurological disorder known as the stiff person syndrome. Amongst many other symptoms, this condition comes with symptoms like muscle spasms, walking difficulties, shortness of breath, and heightened sensitivity to noise and light. This has made it impossible for the 55-year-old singer, who has expressed her desire to perform on stage one last time. Fans flooded her with love and encouragement after she came public about the disease being the reason for the cancellation of her Courage World Tour. Recent reports reveal that Celine would make a full recovery as she is working with doctors who specialize in stiff person syndrome. Celine also reveals her ballet routine and exercises as what she does to keep fit. One time in her career, she was accused of an eating disorder, but Celine publicly addressed all arguments. I don't have an eating problem and there's nothing more I can say about it, Celine told People in 1999. I'm just very thin. I don't even train. I'm lucky. Celine's rush into fame afforded her lots of opportunities and she was going to make the best of every one of them. Celine and her late husband owned an artist management company in Laval, Quebec, Canada. They also opened a golf club, nightclub, and many restaurants. In 2003, Celine formed a partnership with American beauty company Cody for the release of Celine Dion perfume. Fast forward to 2013 and her fragrance line has grossed over $850 million in retail sales. She also launched a bag and accessories line, which she claimed topped $10 million in sales just after three collections. Celine Dion has, with time, proved that she has all it takes to thrive in the entrepreneurship world, just as she did in the music industry. Celine has come a long way from sharing a tiny bed with her siblings as a child. And while life came with its ups and downs, the singer is grateful for the life she got to experience. These days, Celine is setting her eyes on the simple things of life, like family and playing motherhood duties. Unlike many other celebrities, Celine revealed that she consciously chose not to employ nannies and helps to assist her in nurturing her sons even at the times when her career kept her busy. While that took a toll on her, it also strengthened her bonds with her children. She describes them as her biggest success in life, and all that defines her rather than the fame, awards, and hit records. Fans wish their icon a quick recovery as they can't wait to see her perform on stage again, even for just one more time. Celine Dion, now 55, is unsurprisingly aging like a fine wine, all thanks to her beauty and body exercise routines. Celine's legacy is marked by her powerful voice spanning decades of musical success. The Canadian-born singer has an estimated net worth of $800 million. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our other videos of beautiful actresses from the yesteryears on the end screen.